Hello and welcome once again to Hoosier History Legends and Heroes. With this video, we want to take you back to the early 1800s in southern Indiana, the years 1816 to 1830. Okay. I don't know how many people know that the 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, lived in southern Indiana from 1816 to 1830. He was seven years old when he came to live in Indiana and left when he was 21. In the span of 14 years, he arrived as a boy and left Indiana a young man. On June 12, 1806, Thomas Lincoln married Nancy Hanks in Hardin County, Kentucky. There are no pictures or sketches of Nancy that exist. So this painting of Nancy Hanks is an interpretation of what Nancy may have looked like. It was created by artist Lloyd Ostendorf. The first child of Thomas and Nancy was a daughter, Sarah, born February 10th, 1807. Abraham was the second child born on February 12th 1809. He was born in a log cabin on Sinking Springs Farm near Hodgkinville, Kentucky. A third child, Thomas, was born in 1812, but he died in infancy. Thomas Lincoln was a victim of Kentucky not having proper land surveys in its early years. Many families were forced off of their farms after surveys were completed and land titles changed. Thomas Lincoln lost two homes in Kentucky because of this, one of them being Sinking Spring Farm where Abraham Lincoln was born. Because Indiana didn't have the problems with land titles that Kentucky did, Thomas took two weeks to move his family to Spencer County, which was then Perry County, settling at the Little Pigeon Creek community. The Lincolns settled in December of 1816 which is the month and year Indiana became a state. And I don't know about you, but the idea of moving to Indiana with your wife and two young children in the early 1800s in December with nothing waiting for you but cold, wild animals and wilderness, well, I think I would have said, no way. I'm not that crazy, but Thomas did just that. A good thing is that Thomas was an experienced carpenter who owned better carpentry tools than most settlers. It was said that he could build a cabin in four days, and this would mean that their new cabin would have been built before the harshest winter weather began. But I think I would have still said, no, I'll wait till spring. The next year, he built up the homestead cleared land of trees and rocks before plowing, and then he would plant crops. I'm sure that Abe helped his father with what he could, and Sarah helped her mother. In the fall of 1818, residents of Little Pigeon Creek community started coming down with what was called milk sickness. This was caused by people consuming dairy products or eating meat of a cow that had eaten the white snake root plant. Milk sickness was most common in dry years when cattle would find these plants when they roamed in the woods and underbrush where the white snake root plants grow. Most of the settlers who came down with milk sickness became deathly ill. Abraham's mother, Nancy, came down with the milk sickness after caring for neighbors who had been ill with the sickness. Nancy died of the milk sickness on October 5th, 1818, less than two years after moving to this Indiana community. Thomas and Abraham built Nancy's coffin and buried her in the cemetery at the top of a hill behind their farm. This left 11-year-old Sarah to run the household of her father with nine-year-old Abraham and Nancy's 19-year-old orphan cousin, Dennis Hanks. Think of the responsibility placed on the shoulders of an 11-year-old girl, especially at the time 
she was mourning her beloved mother. After being a widower for a period of time, Thomas went to Elizabethtown, Kentucky to find himself a new wife. Having known Sarah Bush Johnston before he moved to Indiana, he had learned that she was a widow with three children. He visited Sarah and asked her to marry him. On December 2nd, 1819, Thomas and Sarah would marry. Thomas returned home to his Indiana farm with Sarah and her three children. Sarah had one son and two daughters. From then on, Abraham would share the loft with Dennis Hanks and Sarah's son, John. From all accounts, Sarah was a good stepmother to the two Lincoln children. Abraham grew very close to Sarah and he would call her mother. I've read about a story between Abraham and his stepmother, which I believe proves the fact that they got along very well indeed. When Abraham was 18 and was six foot four inches tall, Sarah would tease him that he was so tall that he would dirty the ceiling in the cabin. Once while she was away, he came up with an idea to tease her. He rounded up a few local boys to step in mud outside the farmhouse kitchen in their bare feet. He picked them up and took them inside to walk along the ceiling, leaving muddy footprints. When Sarah arrived home and saw what Abraham had done, she threatened to spank him as she chuckled about it. I think this is a wonderful example of how close they had become. The story doesn't say who cleaned the mud off the ceiling, but I would bet it was Abraham. Abraham would work hard on his father's farm to help him. He also helped others in the area and would give his earnings to his father until he was 21. As Thomas's eyesight became weaker, Thomas relied more and more on Abraham's help with the farm and earning extra money. Sarah recognized in Abraham right away his love of reading and learning and had given him access to the books she brought with her from Kentucky. Abraham did receive some formal education. Traveling teachers would stop in the area for a few months at a time for the children to go to school. But Abraham says that altogether, he did not receive a full year of schooling. Even though when thinking of Abraham Lincoln, you think of a tall, slender man, but it was said of him that he was tall, strong, and athletic and became very good with an ax. Local people remembered that he could lift more weight and drive an ax deeper than any other man around. Abraham also was involved in wrestling. It is said that altogether he had at least 300 matches, not all of these were while he lived in Indiana, and that he lost only one. Needless to say, wrestling back then is not the same as wrestling is today, and it is said that he trained in the rough, catch-as-catch-can style. And believe it or not, he was honored with an award from the National Wrestling Hall of Fame in 1992. Another job he had as a teenager was operating a ferry boat service across the mouth of the Anderson River. Abraham built a scow that would take passengers out to meet the steamers on the Ohio River. One of his memories was when he took two men out to meet a steamer on the Ohio River, and once he helped them aboard with their trunks, each man threw him a silver half dollar. He was known as saying, I could scarcely credit it that I, a poor boy, had earned a dollar in less than one day. In August of 1826, Abraham's sister Sarah married Aaron Grigsby. On January 20th, 1828, Sarah died in childbirth and is buried with her baby boy at the old Pigeon Creek Cemetery. Abraham blamed his brother-in-law for Sarah's death because he didn't send for a doctor. In 1830, when Abraham was 21, there was a fear that the milk fever was returning to Southern Indiana. Thomas had heard of good farmland in Illinois and that there wasn't the milk fever. So Thomas moved his family, including Abraham, to Illinois. Had this move to Illinois not have happened, who knows how the life of Abraham Lincoln may have been different. 
but they did move to Illinois, and Abraham eventually becomes the 16th president of the United States. Abraham came to Indiana as a seven-year-old boy and left after years of becoming a man and much heartbreak with the loss of his beloved mother and sister. 40 years after the death of his mother, he said, all that I am or hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. Southern Indiana has a national memorial and national park in honor of Abraham's time in Indiana. His formative years were spent in Indiana and we are very proud of that fact. You can visit his memorial, his mother's and sister's gravesite. The contact information is shown. Thank you for watching and we hope that you enjoyed learning a little about the life of Abraham Lincoln and his time living in Indiana. Like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.